Uh, we want to thank you all for being a part of today's uh, uh, virtual service. Uh, we thank everybody for tuning in. I mean, uh, it's always talking about 2,000 churches in the city of Memphis. I think it's over 2,000 online. So everybody's doing online and everybody's, you know, in person, whatever. But you decided to uh, be a part of today's service here at Inspire Church. And I want to tell you, I thank you and I appreciate you all. You all. Uh, for being a part of today's sermon. Uh, yeah, a uh, couple of announcements. One thing is that uh, after today, we typically we have a, a meeting and we go over the meeting for those of the members. Uh, so for those of the members who are members of Inspire Church, we will not have a meeting after this virtual service today. However, on the 24th, I need all members to be present. Uh, we're gonna talk about the future of Inspire Church how, and how we're gonna move forward. Uh, there's there are going to be some things that I'm going to ask of you all uh, to participate more in. And I think it's going to be a wonderful time that we're going to have uh, in that particular uh, meeting. Um, uh, anything else we got? That's it. All right. So um, also, I talked about it last week. And I just want to reiterate to those of you who are friends of Inspire Church and you are supporting us financially, um, We've we've made it where you can go on either our website and as you go on our website and you want to give uh, to Inspire Church, there, there are categories you can give to and we will make sure we, there's a great team that Inspire Church has uh, of making sure that all of the money, all of the financial support that you give, when you give and you decide that you want to pick a particular uh, um, ministry or a particular place that you want your finances uh, to be a part of or to help and you want to do it through Inspire Church. Uh, so you can go on our website. If you go on our website, uh, you can click on missions, homeless, orphans, widows, benevolence, and we'll make sure every, all the financial support you give uh, goes to that particular place. If you're giving through Cash App, because I know some of you guys, uh, some of you all like to give through Cash App. If you're giving through Cash App, I and mean, these are friends of the ministry, and you're giving through Cash App, and you, and you want to do the same thing, I think it's in a subject area, you can put, like put, put it there, put missions, homeless, orphans, widows, benevolence uh, through the cash app, and then therefore uh, the finance team knows where to allocate uh, the finances so that we can properly uh, make sure those, uh, that financial support you give is given to the right area. And um, those of you who are members of Inspire Church, uh, and you have not been given or you stopped giving, whatever. I know things happen, so I'm not trying to push you on the financial piece, but we do uh, encourage your support uh, to support us. So if you have not been given uh, or you stopped giving, uh, we encourage you to continue to, or to start back giving again. Again, those of you who have been given and uh, you've been given on a consistent basis, I really do appreciate it and I really do thank you uh, we, we're, we're working on most of the money goes really to get the get the word out. Uh, we don't have a lot of overhead. And so what we want to do is increase our voice uh, in the land to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, if you are giving, I want to appreciate it. And I want to thank you. If you're friends and you're giving, I want to thank you. And um, uh, we really appreciate um, the support you all are, are, are giving to us. So we're going to pray and then we're going to get in the word of God. Amen. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to get into your word. Um, I pray as I, as I decrease um, in my heart that you would increase, O oh, Heavenly Father, that the words I speak would be uh, the words that you would want for, for your people to hear, uh, starting with myself. Uh, and, as, and I pray that our hearts are good and understanding ground. As we receive your word, O oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that it would, it would, it would, uh, um, go deep into our hearts and give increase in our lives 30, 60, and 100 fold. For your glory and that your son shall be glorified. This we thank you and love you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so there are a couple, uh, a few words that we talked about. We're going to give a, a little recap. Um, I, I do want to say this because the title of the message is Fruit or Form. Uh, fruit meaning uh, that we're that we are actually showing, showing, and last week we talked about the fruit of the Spirit, that we are actually showing or we are actually um, demonstrating 
the fruits of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the faith, that we're actually doing this in our lives. That's, that's a fruitful life for the believer. And, and the form is just, you know, you can, we, we act the part, and, and meaning that, you know, it looks like we're doing, you know, all of the things that, that what we say a church person is supposed to look like or supposed to dress like. And, and so we do a great job of doing it at church. Uh, we do a great job of doing it in public, uh, but at home, like that, that's the real question. Like, who are you at the house? You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you when you're, I got even one better. Thank you, Lord. Who are you when you're by yourself? That's the one. Like, what are you watching when you're by, this, by yourself? What are you thinking when you're by yourself? You know what I'm saying? And so the, the fruit is, this is who I am all day, every day. <laughs> it's funny to me. This is who I am all day, every day. Uh, uh, this, this is the fruit and I am doing my best. Now again, we're not talking about people who are perfect, but we are trying to get like perfection. I'm, this is me. If, if God says I am perfect and therefore you be perfect, like we're striving to get to the, perf the perfection in Christ Jesus. Like what does that take? And it's a great journey. Like I think it's a great journey for us to take uh, to be perfect in Christ Jesus so that God gets the glory. And in the process and, and just trying to figure it out and leaning more on God and, and, and getting in his word and, and just like just really going through the stuff, this, this journey, this, this flow of the current, like the, the word of God or the spirit of God has a current. And if we get in the flow of the spirit of God and allow him to take us in the current, I think we'll, we'll progress a little bit more and we'll begin to show more fruit uh, in all of the areas of our lives and be less form uh, in, in, in the areas of our lives. So, 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 so we want to be less formed. I mean, in us, in, in form people, we, we can say the right things. You know, we, we go to all of the right places. Like I'm, you're, you're at, here's the thing. And this is what I don't, I don't want you to, to take. Here's, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to think because, and I'm, I might repeat this. I don't want you to think because they go to church every Sunday or, or we go to church every Wednesday and we're prayer meeting and all. You, you would think a person who, who goes through all this stuff that they are, like that's the person who's, who's doing, like they're the fruit person. But again, we're talking about what's the heart of a person that we don't know, you know, that we don't have, um, um, we just don't, we don't really know what, what, what that is. But over time, as we'll look, over time, it'll begin to produce itself and, and you'll, be, you'll begin to, to see. And so the first time we talked about exegesis and eisegesis and narcissus, and as you know, exegesis is when we look at the text and we decide what does the text say, you know, we want the text to say exactly what it says. We don't want to recreate it. We don't want to make it say anything other than what the writer originally wanted to say when he penned uh, the, the, uh, the historical events that took place. Like, what is he actually saying and, and, and where is Christ in the text? Where's Christ in the text and what can we learn from the particular text? My, this is my philosophy. My philosophy is that most of the Old Testament and the Gospels is, a, is more so um, description. It's, it's pretty much describing what actually took pl place between God and his people. And, and from that, you can extrapolate. Is that right? Is that right? That's a good word. From that, you can take away uh, uh, some life, <laughs> some, some lessons or you can you can see the sovereignty of God more and understand how he works. And so so and, and then the the epistles that, you know, mostly written by Paul, those are prescriptions. In other words, that's that's what we are. We're supposed to do as believers. That's what we're supposed to actually do to help us produce the fruit that God wants us to do. And then you have Narcissus Jesus, Narcissus Jesus. And remember now, I'm not anti Narcissus Jesus because I think Narcissus Jesus uh, uh, sermons provide good motivation and, and it helps the believer and it encourages the believer a little bit more. And like, well, you can do it through Jesus Christ. I, I get it, but I'm not anti, I'm not for it every Sunday, but I think it's, it's a great thing. And so what I wanted to do with the Narcissus Jesus was let us understand what Narcissus Jesus is and then try to move us away from that, um, particularly during this fruit of form sermon series that we began to not plug in ourselves is always the one who's doing right, 
but to plug in ourselves and be honest with ourselves. And I want us to do a self-evaluation of where are we? Are we really producing fruit? Are we, are we really producing, you know, the things that God wants us to do? Or are we formed? You know what I'm saying? Like we begin to go through the list in, in 2 Timothy and Galatians 5 to find out where we are. And then we went to the fruit of the Spirit so we can figure out, okay, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And, and when I went that way, again, I wasn't doing it because I wanted you to, um, to feel bad about, you know, because people say that. I've heard it before, but I'm not there. I'm like, oh my God, like, like you can't get it, but that's why you still have breath. That was good. That was a good one. The fact that you still have breath in your body is enough that to give you the assurance that God is saying, okay, you got another day. Okay, I got mercy. I'm having mercy. I'm, I'm, having, I'm having long suffering, being patient with you. You got another day to get it right. You got another day to choose me. And so we were thankful that uh, the rapture really hasn't happened and it's been, you know, 2,000 years or however long it's been. And so we're grateful that that hasn't happened because that means God is still being merciful toward us um, uh, in, in our approach and things of that nature. And so we looked at, we, we, we looked at um, the, the works of the flesh and, and I, was, I was going through and I was like, well, which, which works of the flesh can people really, like... Which works of the flesh are more about form? Like, like you can really say this, you, you demonstrate form and not necessarily godliness uh, or fruit, but, you know, you can hide in form. You know, what, what works of the flesh hides itself in, in form? And, and, and there were three that I, that I identified. I think, you know, if this is who we are and this is what we're operating in, then, you know, it, it helps us to, in, in a bad term, in a bad sense, it helps us to, or it, it messes with us because now we don't look at ourselves, so to speak. And so we look at people and we say, okay, they're doing, they're actually doing wrong. They're actually committing this particular act. They're actually committing this particular sin. And yet we have uncleanness. Like, so in, in the text in, in Galatians chapter five, uncleanness means my, my motives are p impure. I don't have the right motive. So you have the right action, but you don't have the right motive. You're, you're operating in your flesh. You know, there was a, a, a text in uh, Proverbs 23, 6 through 8. It's, I know y'all heard the text says, a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Well, well, in context, in context of that particular text, there's a man who is evil and he, he goes to fix a, a, a meal or a food or a, or a lunch or have dinner prepared for this guy. And, and the proverb says, like, hey, I know he's, he's doing this for you, but as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. In other words, yeah, here's this evil guy. He's giving you this particular thing, but his heart or his motive is unclean. And as he thinking, as this evil guy thinks in his heart, so is he. So don't get, don't get uh, swayed by the things that are given and to think, oh, everything is good. No, 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 no. That person is exactly who... Who they showed you that they were in the, in the beginning. Hatred. Hatred is another one. Uh, we talk about, you know, being someone doesn't uh, doing murder or murdering someone, but yet you have hatred in your heart. And so Christ tells us that's the same thing. And then you have envy. And so you can't really see when you envy somebody like that's not, you know, oh, man, look at what he's doing. He's doing envy like you can't really see that. And so that's that's one of those things. So if this is if this is, you know, if these are some of the things you find yourself regularly participating in, then you're, you're, you know, that's, that's where you can have this form, you know, and you can't really see hatred and, you know, unclean motives, and you can't really see envy, in, but uh, it allows you to be able to put this cloak on, on yourself and uh, get you to a point where you are not producing fruit in your lives. Amen. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read verses. So we're going to do verses 15 through, what my notes say? 15 through 20. This is going to be two parts. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Uh, this is the this is Matthew chapter seven is part of what they call the Sermon on the Mount. Um, uh, this is where the uh, uh, the the Beatitudes were were given and, and 
um, some of the archae archaeologists have said this is pretty much this is probably around the area where this was actually given. Here's, here's a good thing. Uh, here's another tool, uh, ChristianAnswers.net. Uh, the reason I love ChristianAnswers.net, this, I didn't get this from ChristianAnswers.net, but ChristianAnswers.net, it uh, gives like maps. It, like, it, so for, some, for, some, for, for me, it's like when I see the, the actual place or the, the mountain or, you know, when I see the things I'm reading about and there's an actual picture, for me, it kind of, it just, it makes it feel a little bit more like, like I can feel it, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, yeah, like we know it's real because it's history, but because we're looking, uh, we're looking at Christianity through a Western, a Western lens, it kind of takes away some of the things. So I love ChristianAnswers.net and it provides, you know, when you look up, go to Bible encyclopedia on ChristianAnswers.net. And then sometimes, you know, if you look at particular places, they'll have actually maps of that particular place. So anyway, yeah, Matthew chapter seven, uh, verses 15 through 20. And we're going to we're going to break it down one by one. All right. Starting at verse 15. So my, my version is going to be in the King James version. It says, beware of false prophets. Now, one way to do this, one way for us to beware of false prophets is to stay. I need y'all to hear this. This is what I need y'all to hear. One way for us to be aware or be careful or be mindful or be or pay close attention or know when there's a false prophet. One thing to help us out in, in understanding that or doing that is staying in constant fellowship with God through his word. And not just prayer. Now, I'm not, I'm not taking away anything from prayer because prayer is necessary because we're communicating. But if I really want to know, if I really want to see or recognize when there's a false prophet available, a, a, a false prophet in my presence, the best way I can do that is the more I get to know God's word, the more I can hear, I can hear when he's not preaching what, what thus says the Lord. Second Timothy 2.15 tells us to, to, to study to show ourselves approved. I'm studying, I'm studying. You remember the word exegesis? I'm exegeting the text. I'm studying the text so that I can show myself approved rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, remember, I've been giving us stuff as, as, as we've been preaching uh, since 2019. I've been kind of giving you guys things. So you underline and define, you're circling research. And, and it's OK to take your time and do all these things because it is necessary. It is necessary for you to really understand what the word of God is saying. It is necessary for you in building your relationship with God. And according to this text, it is necessary so that you can be aware of false prophets. That means there are people who are actually talking to the children of God. They're actually in the, here's the thing, they're actually in the church and they know. They know what they're saying is not right. I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all what I, so I'm telling you what I, I've, I've heard some things. That there's a, that they, they know that this is not the way I'm supposed to teach the people. But because they feel like the people won't respond the way they're supposed to respond, they'll teach it different. Are y'all with me? And so, and so if, we're, if we're exegeting the text, if we ourselves are exegeting the text, we're rightly dividing the word of truth. If we're exegeting the text, then it's hard for the false prophet to fool us with their eisegetical approach to the word of God. If we are, I'm saying it again, if we are exegeting the text, that means we're actually looking at the text exactly for what it is. We know it's prescription and description. We got all these things. We're looking at the culture. We're looking at the setting. We're looking at the audience. We're looking at the author. We're looking at the time. If we actually take the time to do that, then when, when, when the preachers eisegete the text, meaning in other words, they're going to they gonna tweak the text to make it fit something, then we can, we can, because we're studying to rightly divide the word of truth. We ourselves, like, listen, y'all, oh, my God. This is probably the most important part of this whole thing T to help us move. If we if we are like, I think all, all of us, some some area in our life, some that we're all form somewhere. But but it helps us to move from form to fruit. If we just take the time to study the word of God, I, I hear so much. This is why I talked about prayer is not a not prayer, not prayer alone. Because I hear a lot of people say, we know my prayer every day, I pray every day. 
And then when I asked, asked them about, well, yeah, but how much do you read? How much do you get in your word? Then the next thing is always, well, I don't have time. Like, that can't be that. And so because we're not getting to know God more or getting to know God better, and then when, listen, life happens to us all. So, and I think we've done a horrible job as Christians by telling people, once you come to God, everything is up. No, it, <laughs> I was, we was reading, I asked, asked Shemika, why is the narrow way hard? It says the narrow way, which is the way to God, that's a hard way. So it's not, man, you come to Christ and just roses, rose petals fall on the ground as you walk. No, that's not, that's not what's happening. That's not what's going to happen. So, so life, whatever life is, it happens to us all. Doubt, it happens to us all. Disappointments, it happens to us all. Uh, 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 uh. Hope deferred. It happens to us all. The desires that we want to happen and they're good things and they're great things and they don't come when we want it. It happens to us all. Death happens to us all. Like my wife, I love, I love the saying my wife says, none of us are getting out of here alive. In the land of the living, none of us are getting out of here alive. Everybody experiences, everybody's going to experience a funeral. Somebody else's <laughs> and yours. You may not be there, but for yours, but it's an experience. If this is the truth, and it is, I, I'm, I'm off now, I'm really off. If this is the truth, then I encourage you, <laughs> I encourage us, to make getting to know God through his word a priority. <laughs> he said, I esteem the word of God more than my necessary food. What is necessary to sustain my living on this earth, the word of God is esteemed more than that. Now, I'm not talking about being scholarly. Listen, I'm not talking about so you can, so you can have these debates with these guys. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the relationship with Jesus Christ. Just the relationship in itself. I am getting to know, I am praying with God, and I am in his word only for the purpose of building a relationship with him. I need us to get to that part. I need us to get to that part. And in doing so, in, 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 in studying his word and getting to know him more, because I'm studying in truth, he said he is truth. He proved that he was truth by resurrection. By studying truth, I can quickly identify faults. Very good. I like that word. I can quickly identify what's counterfeit. And no, none of us are perfect. And no, none of us are getting it right. But we should be, we should be growing, you guys. And I know you messed up last week. Start, come on. There's a reset button with God all the time. Just, if you woke up, reset button. Start again. Don't, 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 don't quit on God. God's not quitting on you. He says, beware of false prophets. One commentator said this, commentator said this. He said, one way to know a false prophet is by their teachings. Huh? What? Yeah. Because their teachings will minimize Christ and maximize themselves in the teaching. One way to identify a false prophet, this is his, this is his opinion is that the teachings of the false prophet, they, 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 they speak less about Christ and they build themselves up in the text or in the, in the teachings. They minimize the glory of God and maximize the glory of themselves. In other words, everything that sounds good ain't sound. Just because, because you know, it's, it's, it's said with such authority and it's, it's said with such, like, aggressiveness. And I'm telling you that the word, like, no. I remember we, we, we preached about when in Jeremiah and when, when in Jeremiah he was he was he was going forth and he was talking about, you know, what, what thus said the Lord. And there was another prophet that was saying, yeah, in two years, you're going to get all your stuff back. Ah! And Jeremiah had to come back and tell them, hey, listen, man, bro, lying. But the people, they, they believed him. And then, huh? 
They believed the false prophet. I'm sorry. They believed the false prophet. They was like, yeah, we're going to get out. They marching around. I don't know if they're going to march around. But they was like, yeah, we cannot stop that. Oh, we cannot stop that. Uh-uh. Then God had to tell them, no, no, no. You're not leaving. You, and matter of fact, this place you hate being, stay there. Yeah, yeah, you're not leaving. Then, then he said this, that place you hate being, I want you to grow there. I want you to build there. I want you, I want you to, to be successful in that place. And as Shemika pointed out, and pray for that place. Pray for Babylon. Because praying for Babylon, if Babylon does well, hey, guess what? You create a better opportunity for you to do well. So don't look at the United States of America and be like, I hate America. I, I get it. I, I understand, especially if, you, if you're an American whose descendants are from Africa. I get what you're talking about, but we don't want, we don't want America to fall. No, 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 that's not what we want. So everything that sounds good, it ain't sound. Read 15 again. It says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. In other words, they have a form of godliness. They look the part, but they don't have God's heart. They have a form of godliness. They look the part, but they don't have God's heart. Whatever your culture is, like, you know, or whatever your, you know, design of your church is, you know, here we don't really wear ties and stuff, but they have a nice little shirt with the skinny jeans, and they look like how my pastor are dressed, you know, or they got the fat knot, fat knot tie with the short tie with a tight jacket, and they look like a real good preacher, or they got the long flowing robe with the collar thing on, and they, they look like, like, man, he's got to be the pastor, you know, whatever your culture or how your pastor dressed, but they look like it, but he says, listen, they look like this, they have sheep's clothing. They got the right gear. They right, got the right, you know, what a preacher or a pastor is supposed to look like. But inwardly, in their heart, in their heart, they're wolves. So again, they look the part, but they don't have God's heart. 16 through 20. I'm going to read 16 through 20. And then we'll, 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 we'll break it down and then we'll be out. 16 through 20. Here we go. King James Version. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, Ye shall know them. So again, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna go back and we're going we're gonna to deal with some points. But I, but I want to point this out. I want to point this out. I want you all to hear this. I want to hear this. So just me kind of giving a summary of what I feel like this text really says. So let's say that you've never, you've never seen any tree at all. Like you don't know what the tree looks like. You don't know what, what trees produce. None of that. You, know, just, you, just, you don't know. Here's, here's, here's what I heard. Even for a person, like you, you, you know what a fruit, you know what an apple looks like, you know what a peach looks like, like you know, you know the end, but you've never actually seen the tree. And although you've never seen what the tree or what, what, the, what the tree looks like, over time, All you have to do is give it time. If I've never seen the tree before, over time, all I have to do is give it time. It will produce or show on the outside what it really is on the inside. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful about, about speaking against people. And you've got to be careful about speaking in favor of certain people, business, ministries, whatever the case may be. Because in due time, in due season, whatever was really on the inside of that tree, it will begin to produce and let you know what kind of a tree or what kind of a person that particular person is, is really who they really are. Remember, say it again. If you're looking at people, 
and, and you really don't know, like, I don't know who he is. Just, just, just give it time. Just, just, just kind of wait for a minute. Well, I don't know what kind of tree it is. I've never seen anyone. what kind of tree. I don't know what kind of tree it is. It's a, they say it's a fruit tree. What kind of fruits are there? I don't know. All right, just give it time. In time, it will produce or show on the outside what it really is on the inside. So what I don't want you to do, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to dismiss the gift of discernment. Don't, don't, dis, don't dismiss the gift of reserve, I mean discernment. D don't dismiss, I ain't something telling me, like, like, I don't know, it's just something about that guy. I ain't, really, I ain't really feeling it right now. Like, I don't want you to dismiss that. And I don't want you to be paranoid about things, but I don't want you to dis dis dismiss that. Because what discernment is doing, discernment, discernment is, is revealing to you in the present what time will show you in the future about the person. Discernment, discernment will say, hey man, I know you haven't seen any signs of this, but I'm telling you, brother don't like you. I'm telling you, she don't like you. you. You feel what I'm saying? And so there's a discernment that says, there's a discernment, it reveals, it reveals today what time will eventually show you tomorrow. Time, time. I always think about Mitch, uh, Shmig and I were talking one time. I said, man, you know, time will snitch on you. you, know, you know, time will snitch on you. Time will eventually tell. And then I got the thing. I said, well, no, time really, time don't care nothing about who you are. Like, time doesn't be like, I'm not going like, to reveal. No, time does, time does not care who you are, where you are, how much money you got. Time will tell on you. Time will tell. That's, what, that's the phrase we always say. So, so, so when you think about, I, I used to say time with snitch, but no, time with tell. And snitching and telling is two different things. Like, like snitching is, you don't want nobody to know. You're like, hey, he, he, he did it. That's, that's snitching. Like, I don't want nobody to like, <clears throat> Telling is like, hey, 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 officer, officer, yeah, 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 come here. See that dude right there? Yeah, yeah, that's the one who y'all was chasing the guy, right? Yeah, that's him right there. Yeah, 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 buddy, you're going to get it. Like, that's, that's. That's telling, you know what I'm saying? T telling is like, it's like a, 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 a like, ooh, 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 Miss Dona, keep cheating on, on, on Keisha Paper. Like, that's, that's, that's telling. Snitching is, you at the, <laughs> it's funny to me, you at the pencil shop and you shopping your pencil, you like, Miss Dona, keep snitching, keep cheating on Keisha Paper, just telling you no. Like, that's, that's snitching, like, you're like, I don't know. You have to watch them. Watch them. You can snitch. Like, that's snitching. Time, so time really doesn't snitch. Time tells all. Time will reveal who that person really is. If you, I like that. If you get, like, <laughs> I, I think about it, and Shamika said, give them time. Like, yeah, here, here, here's time. Yeah, that's for you. And, and I'm sitting back to see what kind of fruit does this, does this person produce? <laughs> Depending on situation, check this out. This is some. This is barbershop talk. So, sometimes people are with you when you have. If I can say it's a way, I'm trying to say it a good way. P people in favor of you. They they cheer you on when you have less than them. So you know, and I'm always the one you need to come to for your help. I Man, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, people are for you when you have, you know, just as much as they have. Hey, man, we doing this thing together. Man, whatever, bro. But then when you are above them or you have more than them or you have a better marriage, life, whatever, that they have, now they feel some kind of way. All that happened was, was time really revealed to you who they really are. Time really revealed to you that they were never really in your favor. Situations will bring out a person's true character. And so a lot of times people look at people or they determine whether or not we're really Christians when bad things happen. Are we still going to hold true to God's unchanging hand? Are we still going to worship God when things aren't going our way? Are we still going to give, we're going to lift up his name in the midst of trials and tribulations? Those things also reveal to us, are we, are we form and are we, or are we, are we fruit? Because in those, in those times, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow that whatever is going on, it's going to allow the, the fruit to begin to flourish and flourish and, and begin to, to grow and, and ripen. And remember, y'all, I know we're not, all of us, all of us are not there. I'm not there. 
over time, we should be getting to a point where we are, we are ripe and ready for the picking for God to choose and for God to use us for his glory. Back to the text, verse 16. Verse 16. He says, he says you shall know them by their fruits. <laughs> Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs from this? In other words, you're not going to go to a thorn trying to pick grapes. You know what I'm saying? Nor do you go to a fix, a fig, try, of, to a thistle trying to pick figs. So, okay, 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 okay. All right, so here we go. When I, when I, when I see that text, <laughs> what it says to me is, this don't even make sense. Like, it's like, like so, so, so he's talking about a tree bearing this and, and, and like uh, taking grapes from a thorn or taking figs from a, from a thistle. In other words, like this don't, it don't make sense. It don't make sense for people to do this. So, 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 so in other words, talking about the false prophet, you got to be careful. Sheep closing. So, so it says, so you say you love me, but you keep hitting me. Something's not right. Something, something, not, something, not, no, 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 that's, that's, no, no, that's, that's thistle living. I'm looking for grapes. Like, like something don't, something don't work like this. Well, what's, what's the fruit? The fruit don't match what you're saying. And, and, and you look at the false prophet, they're saying things because they're prophets. So they're, they're speaking. They're saying things. They have the look of what it looks like to be right. But their heart is not right. They're wolves on the inside. And the fruit of the tree, remember that we're talking about the fruit and what it bears. The fruit of the tree is different. So, so it's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. If it's, if it's, if it's, if it's bad fruit, that means that's a corrupt tree. And you can't make it be something that is, you can't change it. It is what it is. Well, how do I know? Because the fruit is bad. Well, that don't make me, no, that's what it makes you. It makes you a corrupt tree. Why? Because your fruit is bad. So you say, you say you love me, but you keep hitting me. Something ain't right with this fruit. You say you enjoy being around me, but you always go out with your friends. Something ain't right with this fruit. You say you want better health, but you won't eat right, you won't exercise regularly, and you won't get the necessary rest. Something wrong with this fruit. We say we love God, but we, don't, we won't do what he asks. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey my commandments. That's what he says. We say we love him, but I don't want to do that, God. We say we want to be close to God, but check this out. We won't get in his word. Something's not right. Something's not right. 17. Says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, <laughs> neither can a corrupt tree. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Check out verse 20. It's the King James Version. It says, wherefore, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Again, so this is their fruits. Fruits. By their fruits, you shall know them. I don't know of a tree that grows and only produces, let's just go with the apple tree. I, I don't see, I've never seen in pictures. We, we used to have a peach tree in the backyard. We were standing on uh, Winfield, right? Plum tree. It didn't produce just one plum. That particular tree produced plums. So I don't know of a tree that produces just one fruit. Trees produce fruits. So we should produce, we, we, should, pre, we should be producing good fruit in every area, every branch, every area of our lives that will glorify God. Not just in one area. If I am a real tree, then every branch of the tree, it has fruits on it. If we're trying to get that, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking at it from, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel relaxed either. What area of our lives, let me go back. Here's a question. The question is, in what areas of our lives are we producing good fruit? And what area of our lives 
are we producing bad fruit? And what area of our lives are we producing no fruit? So, so, so the thing we look at, no, no tree, no tree, no tree just produces one fruit. No, no, no tree produces just one fruit. It produces fruits. <laughs> and, and so, and so, and so if a branch can represent areas of our lives, are we producing in that area? And if we're not, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to change that about ourselves? Remember, I told y'all, we're looking at these texts. I know the text started out with the false prophet. I want you to be able to pay attention. I do. But, but I want us to take the point. And so the narcissistic approach would be, you know, people are preaching to us wrong. Blah, blah, blah. No, but what, what am I doing? Where am I not making God happy? Where am I grieving the Holy Spirit? So, so I, I want to I encourage us and convict us at the same time. And, I, and I've said this before. I want to say it again because I really want you guys to understand. I want, you to, I, I want you to take your time to get to know God, but I don't want you to procrastinate. None of us are there. None of us are there. None of us. None of us. None of us. I don't, care. I don't care the most profound bishop, preacher, evangelist, apostle, whatever the person is. I don't care. None of us are there. Only, 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 really, only one good person walked the earth. People said, do the good die. Yeah, only one good really died for no reason. And that was Jesus Christ himself. Other than that, all of us are born in sin and shaking, shaping in iniquity. That's why he could not be born of a man. That's why the Holy Ghost had to overshadow her so that that, that, that which came out of her was not of a man. Because had man, had, had he come through a man, he too would have been born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So he can't do that. Only one good person actually walked the earth. And that was Christ himself. So my, my thing is, all of us. All of us here, in a sense, we, we're, we're bad, in a sense, you know. <laughs> but we need to find ourselves working to get the good. So, again, my question, three questions I'm going to ask you, and I'll ask you again. In what areas of your life are you producing good fruit? In those areas where you're producing good fruit, he's going to prune you so you can bear more fruit or bear much fruit. I, I, I get that. That pruning is not a good thing. It's, it, it doesn't feel good, brother. But it's a necessary thing for his glory. I don't want to work with me. <laughs> in what area of your life are we producing bad fruits? In what area of our lives are we producing no fruit? Those are the questions we have to ask ourselves and do uh, a self-evaluation of our walk with the Lord. Why? So that we can be of benefit. Listen, so that God can get the glory and that we can be of benefit to those who are still here on the earth. Are you understand what I'm saying? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time that you've given unto us, O oh, Heavenly Father. We are, <laughs> we are in need. We are in need. We are in need of you. We can't do this without you. I think we've tried before, and it just, it's, it's frustrating trying to do it. And I'm, I'm just to be honest, there are some areas that we really don't want to. Like, I don't know. I ain't ready for all that. I get it. I get it. Help us, like, fill us, empower us with your spirit. Yes. And in doing so, we follow your spirit, dear God. And regardless of what our emotions and what our feelings are, we follow your spirit. And we do it. And we do it with joy. We do it in love. So in the areas where we're producing, God, thank you. Thank you for helping us in that area. In the areas where we're producing bad fruit, man, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. And help us. And even worse, in the areas where we're producing no fruit, like what? Like we can and we won't? God, help us. Help us. We are in need of a Savior. 
And we're thankful that that Savior is Jesus Christ, your son, whom it pleased, it pleased you to bruise him for our iniquities. Thank you that he stood in the place for us. He who knew sin became sin, that those of us who know sin could become the righteousness of God. We love you, dear God, and we bless your name. Amen.